All right, so it's recording. So I guess I'll start by like introducing what like what is the USA seal. So like it's so USA seal is basically like the like a computing contest where like so you all start in bronze, I guess. So there's problems and each problem we basically have to it looks like something like this and then we look, we like read in some input and do some output so just something like that it's a contest and like actually yeah so i guess we'll like first go over like registering for we need to like you need to register to like actually participate so for this you just choose a username so an email address so like i'm just giving some random one because i already have like one so i and then first name last name should probably make these accurate especially if you plan on going like later on this is just going to like make it much easier for This is going to make it much easier for people to verify that you're actually like who you like you're actually like at where you claim to be in here uh graduation uh i'll just set 9999 you should put your graduation year country usa i assume most of us or oh or wait all of us. Daniel, may i interrupt a little bit do you expect expect us to do this right now follow your instruction or uh, we all go it to doesn't really state. take like i mean i guess you should like kind of know know how to do this i guess so like so back to here like overview you see this thing you just click register for a new account and it leads you to this page and i guess it's recorded as well so technically you don't have to do it right now you could do it, but you should do this like soon. Okay. And then I submit, it's going to, I guess, um, it's going to take a while for me to like, I get a confirmation email. Oh yeah, don't use this email to contact me. I don't even uh, check it. So yeah, um, I'm just using this email to, It's going to send you like a thing, a USA seal new account, something like this. So username something one two three four five six seven password that. It's going to send you a password, so like I guess you should like somehow not lose the password because the password you can't set your own password. And then I'm uh, here. Okay, so that's like, and now I'm gonna like, now like when I go to any sort of problem, it's just gonna say like analysis mode. That's when you know you're logged in. I mean, at least like while we're not during it, like we're not participating in a contest. When you're participating in a, in a contest, it's gonna be different, but like that's for later on in like December. So I guess hopefully any, hopefully everyone gets how to like register for this site. I guess um, I have like a bunch of problems in like this site, like uh, this site. So I guess you can like, so yeah, a lot of the problems are on this site and one thing about uh, this class is that like you should do the problems. So, and the only way you can like uh, see if your like answer is right is if you submit your code and get like the verdict they give you. So, and in order to do that on like most sites, you have to sign up somehow. Um, doesn't take long either. 
Daniel, could you let us take a screenshot to know the address? Because we're not familiar with DMOJ. Yeah, okay. So you're all familiar with usaseal.org? I mean, that's what you came for. Uh, and I guess I'm dmoj.ca. Just because they have some problems, I guess. In particular, they have like problems ranging from like really easy to like harder. So yeah. All right, so back to the registration, you just fill out a bunch of stuff. Uh, this one, they actually, they actually ask for a password. Time zone, I don't think this is actually important, but anyway. I'm just going to select New York and then default language. I mean, unless you program in a different language, Java, I'm just going to do Java 8 because that's all I need. Uh, and because USACO, I think, only supports up to Java 8. And then I'm not a robot. Yeah, I'm not a robot. And then it's going to send an email. Uh, so might take a while to load. And there we go. It sends me the email. I have to click on the link. And it's been successfully activated. Then afterwards, I just click log in and sign in with my site. Sign in with my account. And then I'm good. OK, so any questions about that? So you ask us to registration for two accounts. One is your SSO account. The other is the MOJ account, right? Yeah. Today's homework is registration yeah. for this two account. Good. Yeah. USACO account because, well, you need it for the USACO contests and for the past problem submissions. And this account because you need it for this site's problems, which, I mean, USACO doesn't have, like, it, like, even the easiest problem, like, might be, like, there might not be that many easy problems here. So we're starting with this. Just to at least get you familiar with how contests work, I guess. Okay, so any questions? Okay, so I guess on to the like what environment you should use. So just use whatever local environment you have in case you like somehow can't install Java or like don't want to or whatever. Um, there are like online uh, uh, places. You, the one is this JDoodle, uh, this, or you could like search online Java compiler. I mean, that's the first one that pops up. <clears throat> There's a bunch of other ones as well. So this is if you like cannot <clears throat> install like Java. So what programming language do we select for DMLJ? I mean, you select what language you use, which I mean, I'm doing Java. So unless you program in a different language, it should be Java. I mean, there are like, a, there are like online ones in case you're like local environment, like, can't work fails or like whatever problems. Uh, one problem with this is that like in order to save on some of them, you have to like just copy this, paste it into some random file and then submit that random file. So just, yeah, you learned of that. Okay. And 
yeah so then yeah also there might be like some glitches or something like if you like you know <clears throat> occasionally there's glitches it'll be relatively obvious if there are but anyway one advantage of this thing though is that it's way easier to run stuff so then yeah you just click run it actually execute it's running and compiling is actually just one button here so there's that although you cannot do like file input and output normally because well there's only this interface for the output so yeah and for the input you can just for contests you instead of like interactive mode you do for user input in contest the input like something like something like just put stuff put your input into this box i guess So this is if you want to use an online like environment thing. Okay, so any questions? Okay, I guess I'm Yeah, okay, I, we can get to the, like this, the, I guess we'll start with like the first problem on the like diagnostic. Oh, Daniel, thing, right? Daniel, you forget to introduce your TA. <laughs> we need to okay, so this yeah, I guess uh, this Perfect. class, there's, there's like, um, yeah. So the Chin will like, I guess, encourage you guys and like, I deal with a lot of the administrative stuff and i mean yeah although if you have like any technical questions it's probably better to still ask me because chin might not be able to answer them correctly hi it's everyone. more like administrative stuff encouragement make sure all of you like participate stuff like that okay hi uh everyone this is ching and i'm TA for your class. So uh, I would like to give you some encouragement and also some rule. And don't be scared about the rule. I know, you know, online, I'm a 20 year teacher. So I taught online class too. So I know it's very, very easy to get distracted online. Even for my college student, I am a college professor. And even for my college student <laughs> in my class, actually, I require all students to put screen on. So now everybody turn on your screen. Uh, don't worry about your environment is messy. I, I guarantee you, you know, I saw college students, you know, they're really the dorm, whatever. It's just everywhere, it's everything. I want to have the screen on, okay? I want to see you because everybody become a real person. That's easy to get concentrated. So everybody turn on the screen. And also this course format is two-way communication. So in case uh, you just don't understand, did not follow Daniel, immediately send us chat. So I, uh, you know, uh, we yeah. stop Daniel. Yeah, either chat or by voice, you could just like yeah, say it out loud. Definitely, definitely. By voice loud, that's good. So because I want to make sure everybody follow. So you spend a Saturday morning, think about it. Saturday morning, you have zillions of things you can do, fun thing, and you're here, go is Daniel and you may short of sleep. So that's a lot of sacrifice already. So really, really Daniel want to learn. So if you uh, don't understand, just stop him immediately. I want this classroom environment to be really good and vivid and everybody no hesitation to ask any question. And there is no stupid question in this class at all. And we are all learning. And Daniel want to take you all into the boat and we are going our journey to USACO. So definitely uh, feel free to communicate. Everybody have screen on, that's one requirement. Second requirement, Daniel always constantly give you a survey. 
and everyone need to participate. So for example, we have 19, 20 people. So we want all of you participate on survey. Survey is anonymous. So uh, you, Daniel usually ask, you understand it partially or not at all? Uh, tell the truth. So, so we know you are still here. Yeah, you will not have video game, you know, because you just participate in survey. Okay, you always need participate in survey. And we want really, really this two hour you got you guys going to learn. So I will always check attendance and also check all your screen on. Uh, so Alexandra Wang, please have screen on. And uh, uh, Cody, screen on. Nick, screen on. Yeah. Michelle Sue, screen up. I won't report to your parent on anything like uh, Daniel said, uh, we're not going to report to parents anything. However, if you're not participate or not following the rule, I will personally remind you in class or maybe send you personal chat saying, hi, you know, uh, uh, Amy, uh, you know, please turn on your screen. Hi, Amy, please turn on your screen. So it's requirement, everybody turn on the screen. Okay, please, you know. And also I always will constantly send you, uh, you know, remind uh, if you're not turn on the screen or if you're not participating. If you're not participating in the survey, I don't know who did not participate in survey because all the survey anonymous, but you waste other people's time because we usually waiting until everybody participate in the survey. So in that way, this is really a live class. You know, uh, we want everybody participate in. Michelle, could you turn on the screen? Jeffrey and Darren, please turn on your screen. And I know Saturday morning, it's hard. And you get up, especially if you're not Eastern time zone, then you really already done uh, so much effort, I really want to really gain, okay? If your screen has some problem, you need to send me a note. Otherwise, I want you all screen on. We still have three students not screen on, uh, but we are not going to wait until, uh, you know, because uh, other people need to go class and I possibly, oh, somebody tell me uh, they are eating now so they cannot take screen on. Actually, tell you, I don't mind if you're eating, that's fine. Uh, because I constantly check your screen. I guarantee nobody else will check your screen. It's okay. Uh, so please, okay. Okay, screen on. Then Daniel, you can begin your class. I finished okay. my talk. Yeah. yeah, and then the other thing, like, uh, if like I ask for like any ideas from like any of you, uh, it, you're encouraged to participate, especially if you have an idea. I mean, there's no way for me to force all of you to because if you don't have an idea, then you can't. But like, yeah, there's the, there's the surveys, and then there's also like I ask you for like any ideas or like any of that stuff. You should like participate. Okay. Oh, by the way, one more sentence, okay? In case, uh, you know, you answer question always wrong, that only show you're a little weak in computer science. Computer science is just one out of 1,000 dimension of you. You know, you're a kind of person, you work hard, you have all other perspective. So don't worry about show other people a little bit about the you know, you're weak, it's okay. And we all screen out, uh, you can make friends. If you don't want, it's online course you will ne possibly never see each other anyway so don't worry about anything okay yeah i give back to daniel i i will do very few interrupt i usually do chat to you personally if you don't have screen on uh, so i usually chat you other than that uh, i won't interrupt daniel let him go academic also uh, don't send him email about java question ask question in canvas Please ask question canvas because the email address he gave you is not the one, you know, he constantly can check, you know, a lot uh, timely. So make sure you send the questions through canvas and he always check canvas. Okay. And if you have technical question and a non-technical question, not Java question, uh, you can send me me email too, uh, like one particular issue, uh, send me email, I'm TA, and my email, I will email, uh, I will put in the chat uh, to everybody my email address. So everyone, my email address is xululi at yahoo.com. Uh, please always title uh, Daniel USACO because I also have a lot of email to handle. Uh, if you don't title your uh, USACO, uh, Daniel 
email you and say, oh, man, I may miss that. I may miss your email. But it's better technical question, canvas, non-technical question, you can ask me uh, through this email and uh, title Daniel USACO. Okay, I, I really get back to Daniel. Oh, wait, do you have the Canvas join code? Uh, can, Canvas join code, I don't have. Usually the administrative uh, people get, have. So I, uh, I don't know how to get Canvas code. Uh, no. Unfortunately, no. I will ask and tell you, uh, email you. You, 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 you give me your email address. I, I will email you because I did not see this question in chat. Oh, what is Canvas code? Oh, I did see. Uh, Tristan asked what the Canvas code. Could you give me your email address? Just email to me and then I will send you email. Yeah, actually uh, that's all. So I give back to Daniel, I will, yeah. I will email you back. Yeah, Travis, uh, uh, not Travis, uh, Tristan. Yeah, I will email you back. Okay, so I guess to the problem. So before, like, if you don't have access to Canvas or something, you can like email me, I guess, but like it'll be less less timely of a response. Okay, so I guess going on to the, like the problems and stuff. So like, um, so this problem. So I mean, it's pretty simple. So I don't think we need a block to read it. For this question, print a vote tie. Um, you should take as input a height, which there were which is greater than or equal to five, and then print this thing. H rows and two H columns should be printed using a pattern, like the pattern, a certain pattern. So yeah. Okay, so any questions about like how the problem statement works here? So it's like if you read in five, <clears throat> then then you want to print out that. If you read in seven, then you want to print out like this. All right, so any ideas? In the chat, I guess. Oh yeah, note that H is odd. So yeah, that's important for the pattern. So yeah, so some people said nested for loop, uh, one section at a time and put all the sections together and top half first and then bottom half. Okay, so yeah, so good ideas, I guess. So, I mean, what would one section at a time be? That's kind of like, you have to be careful about what a section would be like, I guess, for that, because you can't like print out the top left and then the top right, like, because when you print, it's in order. So unless you use a 2D array or something like that, which is not necessary for this problem. Okay. So then for this problem, uh, So you can like think about like how we do this. Well, 
first, like, let's first see, like, for each line, what do we have to print? Okay, so first line, we need a star and then a two n minus two spaces, and then star again. Second line, three stars, and then two n minus six spaces, then three stars, and so on, right? All the way until the middle line, all the, the two n stars. All right. So you can write a loop for this actually, because the kth line, it, if like assuming first half, like top half, assuming we're in the top half, or we do 2k minus one stars, then so 2k minus one stars on each end, and say. So there's 4k minus 2, so 2n minus 4k minus 2 spaces, so something like that. All right, and you can check that this works for lines 1 and 2. 1, uh, k, 4k minus 2 is just 2. 2, 4k minus 2 is just 6. So yeah. OK. So then we have a we have a way to do the, now we have the top half. We have a formula for the top half. And the bottom half, um, the case, like, case last line, the case, like, so assuming, in bottom half is just the same thing. Right? So any questions about that? Excellent. How do we do this? Well, we just do a for loop, like for I from one to minus one over two. That's how many, there's total of n lines. The middle line, like excluding the middle line, there's n minus one. So then each half has n minus one over two. So then just here, print 2k minus one stars, print this spaces and then print two k minus one stars. Oh yeah, yeah. Good point. I I used I right here. Yeah. So for I, so two I minus one, then this, then two I minus one. Then we can print. Um, two n stars, then we just do the reverse. So actually, we don't have to keep always keep track of the line number. We can just do this. Print two i minus one stars. Print. 2n minus 4i minus 2 spaces and print 2i minus 1 stars. So, any questions about that?
I I guess take a few minutes, like five minutes to three to five minutes to like I guess write the code for this. So everyone, please hands up. Open your uh, J Doodle online Java editor, or open your own whatever environment, and uh, make sure you take Daniel's algorithm into code. Yeah, practice. Now it's practice time, and then well, preferably uh, use system uh, input and output. So like scanner or like something like that. Um, if you don't know system input, you can just define n as a variable. Yeah, try to code it. Now it's coding time. Everybody hands on coding. Okay. Daniel gave you opportunity to code, then you need to grasp the opportunity. You cannot let it waste it, okay? Yeah, I'm always here to encourage you guys. Coding, coding, coding. So make sure your Zoom ID number is your true name because I'm not take attendance. Okay. Charlie, you're not on the screen. All right, so I guess I'll launch the poll now. Uh, if you're already finished, you can just put understand and can program. If you're not finished, I guess finish up or like up and then like, yeah. Hopefully everyone participates. So if you're done, you just participate fully. If you're not done, don't participate fully because you cannot. I mean, no, time is basically up, right? Oh, time basically up. Yeah, please participate fully. All right, so 11 people can program and seven people cannot program. We're still, oh yeah, 19 people. That's cool. Oh, no, 
I, I count myself too. So we should have 20 people answer. No, no, we have, should have 19. Daniel should not answer. So it's Wait, right. you answer? Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, I answered. So, so you're supposed to have 20, 20 people pull, but uh, you, you, you are not the one person. So 19 pulling will be the correct number. Okay, yeah. so I guess like the whatever. Yeah, do we have 19, 19 people? Yeah, okay. okay, so this is, a, I guess, good. We have 100% polling like rates. So yeah. Cool, cool. Everybody, good job, good job. Yeah, yeah good. I, so I guess I'll go over like the problem. Okay, so. I, I'm just gonna do it in the online ID. So generally in every problem, you want to import these two packages, whether you use them or not, just because you don't want to have to go back up and import them later on. I mean, it's not a big deal, but like, I like to do that. Um, and then system input, you have to do that. And then, just a few things and put that next uh, is like next int is read an int input just in case you forgot or like something read a word or token basically separated by space like yeah you read a word so every character up until the next space or the next new line. Generally, those are the things you want. That, there's that as well, I guess. I guess these are like more commonly used. It technically is this. Usually, the do not use, and definitely do not use with other. Next. So yeah, usually you don't want to use input on next line. So anyway. Here you're just reading in a number, so and then you want to print this stuff. So so we I is the row number here. Less than or equal to because we want to print from line one to line n minus one over two. We want to print uh, two i minus one stars. So easiest way to do that use a loop. And then you want to print. So at the end, you want to print two i minus one stars. So those are the two ends. And then in the middle, in the middle. you want to print. It's two n columns, so two times n minus. Times i plus two. You could simplify that if you want. I'm. You don't have to though. I notice we're using print instead of print ln because we don't want a new line until the very end of the line. Then we print our middle. We need a new line. 
and then you do the reverse. So here, this is the ith line from the back, like from the bottom. This is the ith line. This is ith line from bottom. So therefore, I wants to decrease. And we just do the same thing. You could use a method for this if you want. I'm just going to do this because it's the simplest conceptually. There's five right here. We have put two at the minus one. Yeah, we don't want plus one. We want minus one. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. Two i minus one, because we don't want a thick bow tie like this. So we have something like this. And we're good. I mean, we can try it on their next input, which is seven. We're still good. And it's always odd, so we don't have to deal with the case where it's even. Any questions overall? I guess I'll relaunch the poll. Um, understanding can program means you think you can program if like without the notes, like after class and cannot program means you think you cannot do it without the, with, of course, without notes. Hi right, there. Okay, so 13 people can program. Okay. Hi, right, so like All right, let's do this. What's the polling thing? Wait, I'm supposed to do that? Okay, no. Yeah, we saw your polling already, so you can go to my polling. You see my like five option poll thing? No, we did not see your five option. Hold on, what? to do that okay yeah oh, so i just wanted to like, get a detail on like what the well like if you cannot program like what's the like problem i guess
another poll is shared. Poll ended. What? No, once you share result, it will launch a new poll. Once I share results, it'll launch the new poll. Fail to share results as well. with this polling system. Okay, so now sharing results, but then now. You can launch a new poll. Can you? There's a, there's a problem with launching the new poll. Oh, okay, then you should continue next part. I guess like I just need like the reasons for like cannot like anyone like need like issues with like how you read the user input or like how to how do I maybe do? they just need time to digest so we can pass to the next problem let them go home to go over it so like like if go over they, another problem yeah if they ask they should ask questions okay Other so any questions just ask them because like yeah all right, let's not hold up the class then. Uh, so I guess the next problem, hold on. So this problem. So I guess this one's another one of those types of problems. Trident is a fork with three prongs. Uh, the, there's varying parameters such as the height of the tongs. So in this case, that would be four. And then the spacing between the tongs, that's three here. There's three spaces between the tongs and then length of the handle, which in this case is two right here. Any questions about the problem statement? They just want you to do this type of stuff. So I guess put in chat like any ideas you have.
So I guess I'll go over it. So, so for this one, again, what do we have to do each line? First T lines are uh, the tongues, the thong, like the, what do they call it, tines? Um, then the next line is the, I guess, all stars, the part of the handle and then the, or the whatever, where it separates. And then the final one with like final H lines. is the handle, right? You get that? So that motivates the following. So for I from one to T or from zero to T minus one, doesn't matter. Repeat T times the following which is print star, print So there's S um, spaces, then print R again, print S spaces, then print R again, right? And then afterwards you print how many total columns are there? Well, there's three like tings. I mean, the number of tings are all is always three. So there's three of those. And then oh wait. Yeah, there's another thing. Their trident has spaces in between. Does it have spaces in between? Oh no, those are just. Okay, I see. No, it doesn't. So then I just print. So yeah, how many like columns are there in total? There's three stars and two s spaces. So I print two s plus three like stars. Then afterward, I deal with the handles. So repeat each times. Print S plus one spaces because that's how many are from here to here. And then print a star. Yeah, you might not have to print the S plus one spaces at the end. I'll just put it anyway. And then we're done. So any questions? And technically at the end of these, there's actually like print new line. Print new line. And print new line at the end of each line. So that actually goes on to the new line. Any questions? I guess spend like three to five minutes programming. I'll launch the poll, but like don't answer until you're finished or unless like, yeah, don't answer until you're finished. No, 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 no. That's not what I want. Uh, don't answer until you're finished. Until or until time is up. Time is not up. So yeah.
Yeah, you can only pull in once. So not everybody is so not finished and then you don't have chance yeah, to yeah, yeah. pull in. So always pulling at the end of Daniel's time. Oh, don't put, need more time. Okay, you know what? I'm just not going to pull at, at right now. I'm just not going to pull right now. I'm going to pull at the end of the time. Then. Yeah, you, you can pull at the end of time. Yeah, my student has the same problem, college students. So don't worry. It's a common problem. I give pull too early. They all answer, not finished. <laughs> You know, they cannot answer finished. So the pulling doesn't allow you to change your result. That's the bad about the pulling. Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah, then you, know, you can. I'm just going to pull at the end then, like in yeah, four you can minutes. Put at the end. Yeah, this class purposely scheduled to hands on. Please do it. Please do it. Otherwise, Daniel's code will not be your code. Okay, all this a for loop. Uh, I'm a little bit confused about number of people. There are 20 people show, but why only 18 uh, are the students? Who, who log in to machine? No, I'm oh. here and you're here. But you, well, how can you exclude me? I put you as the co-host. Oh, I see, I see. Then it makes sense. Oh, now I know, Daniel, a moment ago, why the pulling doesn't work. I didn't. No, no, I'm the co-host. I play the pulling, so that disturbs you. <laughs> you can kick me to be student. That's okay. No wonder. So don't hesitate to ask a question. If you're stuck somewhere, you can also, you know, ask Daniel a question in the chat. You know, this class is two-way communication. You know, I know Saturday morning you could choose sleep, you could choose to have fun, but you're here doing coding. And Daniel really wants every single one improve. Okay, every single one. So if you have questions, just email Daniel. No, not email, chat Daniel now. You can do private chat so nobody else seeing your chat. If you're stuck on anything, email him. Okay, I guess I'll launch the poll now. Oh, everybody in the participating polling. Okay. 
Okay, so generally this amount of time is like not enough. Yeah, but it's okay. They can go home, continue. Yeah, but I, I mean, at the very least, though, you need to like be able to start and be confident that you can finish. That's like the important thing. Like one thing about programming, like a lot of thing, times you get, you think you get the idea. And then when you start programming or like when you're in the middle of some process, you just realize you can't do it. So, or your approach is wrong. So it's important to, I guess, start and like make good progress. So I guess I'll end poll just to see like, the, I guess like it's more like this. Okay, so last time it was probably also people just need more time. Okay, so anyway, I guess I'll like, I'll go over it, but actually before I go over it, uh, I kind of forgot to like, I probably should like submit my answer to the previous problem, just so you see like from the online, I just copy my code here um, from your local, you just upload a file, submit solution. Uh, oh, wait, this place only accept, okay, this place only accepts copy and paste apparently. Well, that's no problem for me. In the USACL though, it only accepts the, the file. So yeah, watch out for that. Uh, and it's correct. Okay, so now you hopefully know how to submit. Just click submit solution, copy and paste your code, and then click submit again. Okay, so now on to the the problem. Daniel, could you see? I'll, 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 the... I'll keep this. I'll keep this in a file. Yeah, then you can uh, upload on Canvas. Then if they still struggle, they can review your code and re rewrite in their code. So could you save this first yeah. problem? On okay, file? So, yeah, just it's name local first now. all tie or whatever you name it. Then they can review. What was this called? problem called? Addressing up. Uh... Just whatever you call. All right, so onto this thing. So, so let's first uh, read this. So, this time there's three inputs. There's T, S, and H. So. that and that and then afterward we need the the tongs we need a print star and then print s spaces And print another star. Print S spaces again. And then print another star. And then we print uh, two S plus three stars. Oh, wait, be before that, after each line, we need a new line. And then we print two S plus three stars. And then we print the handles. So something like this.
So for that, we need the spaces first. And print the star. And then print more spaces. Also, after the afterwards, we need a new line. And actually, after this thing, we need a new line as well. So there's input, uh, there's sample input four, three, two. They did it in successive lines. I don't need to do that. It should look the same as their sample output. And it does. So any questions about this? So I guess I'll survey again. Uh, I guess assume that you're given like the give. Okay, don't click the understanding can program, but need more time option. Oh, for this poll. Everyone participate form like three more people i mean technically it's like i put finished problem you can just put like chem program like I, I treat that as chem program because i don't feel like making a new poll for this so three more people uh, either select the first option if you think you can program like without looking at notes and the Select the third option if you think you cannot, and select the fourth option if you have no clue. Uh, three people. Three people, please participate in the polling. Uh, all polling is su successfully get Daniel's feedback. You need to participate in polling because otherwise it's wasting other people's time. Doesn't matter you choose choice one or choice. I will regard choice two as choice one because just you need more time go home. So uh, four student cannot program. Yeah. Daniel, you can share with the coding. Yeah, then okay, ask. I guess that. I'll share. Uh, for the, here, the, if I finish problem, like it, I don't mean finish problem, I just mean can program. So yeah, I guess that's the results. So yeah, any specific like questions first? Yeah, you need to ask a question if you cannot program what stuck you or which line of code yeah. you don't understand. Or like, yeah, what line of code you don't understand or what section of code you don't understand. Yeah, if you don't ask question, then Daniel cannot help yeah. you. So no questions you. means I'm just, unless the majority of the people are stuck. If the majority of the people can do it, then I, I'll go on, okay? Yeah, you ask question. It's your opportunity to ask a question, okay? You can ask privately. So in that way, nobody knows you stuck. But Daniel will repeat the question and explain. Daniel won't repeat your name. So your name will be hiding, but you should ask question. If you do not ask question, it means you just need, we interpret it as you need the time to digest. Then that Daniel will let you go home to line by line reading his code, try to understand. That's okay too, yeah. So if you don't ask a question, then we pass to next problem. Yeah, that means we interpret as you digest, okay? You need to digest. Good. Okay, I, yeah, I guess I need to- so, you know, Next time in your pulling put one more option. I need time to digest. That means they're not totally no clue. They just need to go home, read your code and digest it. Okay, yeah, good. You can continue with another problem. Okay, so let me submit the solution first, just to make sure that 
it follows the details and stuff. Okay, so presentation error, check your white space. My output is this and check my white space. Oh, yeah, they probably do not want my spaces at the end or something. Hold on, is there a sample output that I'm supposed to? All right, let's go back to the problem. Uh, it looks like they do not want a white space at the end. So let me get rid of that. I mean, this problem wasn't that clear in that sense, but like generally you're not gonna run into this type of problem. But if you do, then just, I guess, look at their thing carefully and like submit this. Yeah, there we go. Now it's all correct. Okay. Oh, so that means they don't want the white space at the end? That yeah, they don't want the space. Good. Like, uh, let, let me show the problem again. They don't want the space right here, like after this, this asterisk. But how did you know from their picture? You have no clue to know. <laughs> yeah, but that's I, I guess good. assume that, okay, from now on, assume that if there's no space, like assume that like don't put spaces after the last character in the line that's visible. Okay. Okay, sure. Unless they otherwise say so. So I guess from now on that I mean I guess this isn't gonna happen on the USA seal, but like for these problems, I guess just just don't put spaces after the last character in a line. So yeah, now we know. So I guess the next problem then. Okay, so I guess we'll, we'll, we'll do a different type of, does backslash n count as white space? No, backslash n is a new line though. So you might not want like, there, a single new line is fine. Like you don't want more than one new line at the end. And in particular system that out that print ln is also a new line. So just watch out for that as well. You might not want backslash n too often. So generally, like, for example, in this problem, you read in the two numbers, they want your output in the format of like system.out.println, then system.out.println. So there technically is going to be a new line at the end, but like, that's it. Don't put any more and yeah. So I guess read the problem. Uh, I guess spend like two minutes to read the problem and just put in the chat what you think the problem statement is.
All right, so I guess everyone's read the problem statement. All right, so the problem statement is this. Um, we have a city, mayor is elected every four years, treasurer every two years, programmer every three years, and dog catcher every five years for some reason. So we have that, they're replaced every whatever number of years. And our, and these years are fixed, like sometimes in a problem, instead of having like N, M, K, A, B, or something like that, they just give a number. In that case, it's just treated as it's the same in every single case. So this four, it's a fixed, like for every test case, two, three, and five. So this year, the, there's a new, like everything is replaced. And we want to see like, given a year, so the starting year, it always like changes, it's like changes. And then the ending year, like basically, we wanna, between the starting year and the ending year, everything inclusive, like every year that it, everything changes, right? So any questions about the problem statement? So then like us like, I mean, someone already put the idea, but anyway, generally when does, when do all positions change, right? Let's just say, uh, so when the mayor, we know that when the mayor, like let's just compare like mayor, for example, a uh, mayor. When do both the mayor and programmer change? So we let's first answer that question. So then that is mayor changes every four years and programmer changes every three years. So then uh, both they change every can't be four because then the programmer doesn't eight, the programmer still doesn't, so 12, every 12 years. Actually 12 is the least common multiple of four and three. Anyway, every 12 years. So anyone does anyone don't know what the least common multiple of two numbers is? No, okay, then we're good. So every 12 years, both change. Then when do, uh, all positions change. So this 12 years is because least common multiple of three and four. When do all positions change? Well, it turns out it's just the least common multiple of two, three, four, and five. You can compute that um, least common multiple of three and four, we already know is 12. Two is not a factor in this because we have four so then it's just least common multiple of 12 and 5, which is 60. So every 60 years, all positions change. So in the sample input 2004, it changes. So then 2064, it changes. Right? So any questions about like why this is the case? So then we just like the solution is just output every 60 years starting from X up to year Y. All right. So in this case, 2004, 2064, and then yeah. Any questions about that? All right, so then we'll spend like, I guess take like six minutes to, actually five, four minutes to program this, like three, like three to four minutes to program this.
Okay, I'll launch the poll then, I guess. So, yeah. Three people uh, answer the poll, I guess. Two more people. Yeah, please, you need to participate fully because uh, otherwise then you need to wait. You, you, you waste other people's time. Either, it, it's okay, you say, but need more time. That means you kind of still understand the idea, but you just need more time. One more person. If you're not polling, I mean, you just turn on the video, not uh, turn on the screen, really not, not pay any attention. Right. Please pull it. Yeah, good. Okay, so I guess around half the people need more time. Okay, so I guess I kind of get like what pace I should go at. I guess I'll go over this then. Every oh wait, what I why did I? Okay, so over here it's we read in a single. No, we read in two. No, and you save the Daniel. You don't forget save it's that. Save. It's already oh. saved. Okay, sure. You you put the code down too. So we first read the input, and then we do a. I'll do a for loop from x all the way to y including y they say inclusive which inclusive always means including both endpoints so then less than or equal to and then every 60 years it changes so plus equals 60 after each iteration and we just print all position change in year And then the year, so I. So then let's say my X is 2004 and my Y is 2100. And it'll print that. Uh, I need a period at the end, yeah. Okay. Oh, no, I don't need a period at the end, but well, apparently they don't want me to do it. All positions changing. Yeah. Okay. Well then, let's check it for that. If it works. Check it for a different year. It works. Let's. Then we're ready to submit. And in general, there's no penalty for submitting, so you can submit once you believe you have a solution. Of course, if you don't have a solution, don't submit because that's not going to get you anything. But yeah, so we're all correct. Any questions about this problem? Okay, I'll relaunch the poll. Uh, this time, the first option means you think you can program it in a reasonable amount of time without notes second is you need time to digest and third is you cannot program okay uh, one student still don't understand uh, you can privately chat daniel uh, he can repeat where you got lost yeah, if you don't chat uh, with Daniel, then uh, he will interpret as you still need time to digest, so he will move on. Yeah, ask your question. Okay, so then I guess I'll end the, I'll share the results with Paul. That's currently the steps of the class. Uh, uh, so yeah, so any particular questions you can give in chat or say it out loud chat it's going to be confidential so yeah
Okay, I guess I'll like go on to the next problem then. All right, so this problem. Does everyone take like two or two minutes to read, I guess, and like put in the chat like what you think the problem statement says? Actually, I can't, can I, like, is, is this, does this problem actually fit on the full page? I guess I'll just first deal with this section and then, yeah. You can also put any ideas you have in the chat as well. All right, so I guess everyone, uh, I'll do this. Actually, let me do this. I right, so I guess I'll okay. 
I'll do this. Hopefully the new poll works. I need to see like finished reading. I right, so you're you guys are conf I, I I guess I'm like I should be faster in the reading stage then because I'll be like I done right or like yeah okay so I guess well one student not participate in pooling you know definitely you have to participate uh, you know I'm a TA I yeah good okay, okay so uh, now uh, basically the problem is there's these this menu you there's four sections there's burger drink side order and dessert you have to select one out of the four options and we output the total number of calories so in the sample input case we print out like we like that's a so first will be burger second side third drink then dessert so burger uh, side drink dessert which means it's a fish burger and then fries and then milk and then no dessert so then that would be 431 plus 100 that's 531 and then plus 118 649 which is the answer any questions about that no okay then I guess the, I guess put any ideas you have. Any ideas in the chat? All right, so I guess I'll go over it. So uh, we can just see hard code. The hard code just means directly put in the values yourself. The calorie values in four arrays. Each array, basically one array. One burger, one for side order, one for drink, one for dessert. So something like that. And then just read input and add corresponding calorie value. Any questions? And one thing, like another, like you could use a 2D array if you want, but like there's only four of them in general, so it doesn't make a big difference. So I guess. Yeah, try to do the problem then. Uh, actually, optimally, you guys should have like 
should be on the problem statement like you should have it open on your browser or whatever because well number one you like number one in order to submit it you need the problem like you need to go on the site and second like sometimes the problem like this one it's longer than like i can't show the entire problem plus the sample input and output so then you should like go and put it like look at it on your browser so that you can like see everything okay so then i guess we'll spend like three more minutes to four more minutes to program yeah Right, so yeah, it's important like to read the problem carefully, I guess. I mean, the sample input, I guess, helps you check if you actually read the problem carefully. Like it's first burger, then side, then drink, then dessert. Just like, yeah, make sure you read the problem carefully. The sample input and output are like basically never wrong on like any decent contest. So yeah. And this line shows like, Burger, side, drink, dessert. Okay.
Okay, I'll start the polling, I guess. So like, I guess, yeah, just answer the poll. You all need answering the poll. So if you didn't finish, you still need to answer answering the poll. Two people. Okay, one person. One person. We're waiting. Yeah, you need answering the poll. So we're waiting for you. Please. Yeah, please. You need answering the poll. So that way we answer in like the next 10 seconds, I guess. Please. One student. Okay, I can't like wait because I can't like hold back the class. No, no, no. I will do another announcement. Who are not answering the poll? I was quickly see who is not on the screen. You can't you can't like see the polling thing. No, I at least see on the face if their face is not there. Darren, are you there? I did not see your face. So did you answer in the poll? So we don't know who did not answer in the poll, but we generally require you to uh, you know, respect others because otherwise we, we are going to wait in. Darren, are you there? Okay. Oh, everybody answered. So cool. Uh, yeah, that's good. W wait a second. Okay, now I have to like yeah, there you go. Yeah, good. You can go. Yeah. Okay, so then I'll go over the solution then. Uh, back to here. Is this thing saved? No, this thing's not saved. I need to save that first. What was the previous problem? The previous problem was that. That, that's saved now. So now I can go over here. So this time, burger, uh, burger, side, drink, dessert. Uh, read the input. So then, uh, I mean, we have to store hard code the calorie values as well. Uh, we can just do it here, actually. Burger calories. That's just for simplicity. I'll uh, do it. I'll do one through four. So four six one. Four three one four two zero zero. I'm only doing that so I don't have to subtract one from each of these. That's why I'm doing this because when I index one now it's this. I just don't have to do that, I guess. But then you would have to remember to subtract one from the input. So it's. 157, 70, zero. Wait, 432, no, 431. 461, 431, 420. 157, 70, good. One thirty, one sixty. 118, zero. If you don't want to go back and forth, you could also write these calories on the, a piece of paper or something like that. So something like that. And, and problems like that are not like 
straight printing. It's often useful to keep track of some result variable so that just for convenience or like for order, you don't technically don't have to do it, but it's better if you do. Plus side calories, sorry, plus drink calories. Oh yeah, anyone think this is too small or like, then like just say that, just tell me, otherwise I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that this size of text is readable. And yeah, we just did print uh, this statement. So your total calorie count is and then just the result variable. We need a period this time. So yeah, there we go. And when I submit it, hopefully it works. Oh, array index out of bounds exception. Hold on. Oh, wait. Maybe I should first test it on a sample input just to make sure it works. I could be doing something wrong. So, two, one, three, four. Yeah, you should have probably test your thing on the sample input first. Two, one, three, four. Oh, wait. Yeah, I forgot to do that. What am I doing? 649, yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I don't know what I was doing right there. So now when I submit, it's like no big deal when you like, your total calorie count is 649. What's the, what's the, what's the, your total calorie count is 649. Calorie is capital. Oh my God. Seriously? Okay. I guess you can just watch out for details like that. Details like that are technically like less common than like in USACO than like here, but you still might have to watch out for that. So then we're good. Okay. Okay, so good. So any questions? There's no penalty for submitting, but the thing is like, it takes time to, especially on the USA seal, it takes time to grade. So it's better to test it on a sample input. I guess I forgot to do that, but yeah. Okay, so then I guess the, Next problem. Okay, so this next one's the, I guess the last one we're doing today because we're starting to run out of time. Although we did start like a few minutes late, I guess. So next time we will not wait. We will start exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this one. Okay, so we have this, I guess spend five minutes to read the prompt statement and come up with ideas and put it in the chat. Okay. I'll also put this the link in the chat so that you guys can put it on your own screen just in case because there's more sample and puts it out that's
Oh, so programming, there is speed issue. So the homework today, it's not new homework, just this five problem, asking for close notes, close book, don't look at Daniel Sensor, try to program as fast as possible and put out your cell phone there to time yourself. And you need a recording each individual time. And I will offer your spreadsheet. You're going to edit it and submit it. Okay, so for example, problem one, it's the same problem. Uh, in class, maybe before you listen to Daniel, you may use in you know, a half hour or whatever, you know, doesn't matter. Then after you listen to his idea, maybe you only use three minutes to program it. So some problem may be so easy, you may use 30 seconds to program it. Just record your programming time and, uh, you know, just record the truth. It doesn't matter you you have you know 17 minutes or whatever. You need to reprogramming his program. Then that until then you you truly understand it. Okay, yeah. That's today's homework. Every class Daniel won't assign you homework, but you need to understand coding. Not only is I can do it. Did you use the most efficient way to do it? That's the second question. Third question. Uh, did you really do it fast. Okay, yeah. Oh yeah, and by a fast as fast as possible, like you should also like not lose much like accuracy. So like if you're going super, super fast and then like within 30 seconds you're done, but then you submit and get a wrong answer and it takes you three more minutes to debug. That's worse than if you just spend two minutes making sure you, you're good and correct and like don't have bugs and then just submit and get the correct answer. Right. So honestly, like anything below like five minutes is like the same thing. Actually anything below like 10 minutes is probably just the same thing. So yeah, don't like worry about like super fast, just keep track of your time because I wanna know like, if you're taking 30 minutes to do a problem, then I wanna know like that because yeah. Okay, so I guess I'll polling, uh, I'll, I'll poll the, are you finished reading? Uh, wait, hold on, I need to stop sharing. Let's relaunch the poll. Everyone put if you're finished reading or not. At finished reading also means you understand the problem, by the way. Like problem statement. Well, three, three people, people. two three people. people. One person. One person. Okay. All right, everyone's good with reading. Okay, so then I guess I'll any like ideas or like I guess I'll just go to the idea. So So the input specifies the top side of a captured die consists of several lines. We need the number represented by the die or unknown if the image is incorrect up to like some potential rotations. So this is the O's are the dots and the colons are the other stuff. And then that's a five on a die. Anyone here doesn't know like how the dots work on a die then just say that like in chat. I'm assuming you know how like the dots of the die. So five, it has to be this formation. So like that formation, it doesn't count. That would be incorrect. So it's unknown. Three, it has four, to be- Four look like, four look like. Four looks like all four corners. So what's that's three, the only way as well. Diagonal. What's two look like? Two looks like two corners. Oh, two corners. Three Either looks corner. like, a, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just do this. A one looks like something like ah. Let's let's do this. A dot and no dot. 
this is kind of complicated. All right, that's as good as I'm gonna get, I guess. Instead of O's, I'm doing that because it's less space, so it's more aligned. So yeah, so that would be a five. That's the only way you can do a five. That's the only way you can do a four. Three is the diagonal. It should be which diagonal? It doesn't matter which diagonal it matters. Doesn't, I mean, it can be, rot a dice can be rotated, right? So it doesn't matter which diagonal this diagonal or that diagonal. And then two is two corners. Again, it can be rotated. So the other set of two corners, like the other two corners, they have to be opposite corners though. And a one is something like that, the center. So there's also only way, one way to do that. A six, oh yeah, I forgot a six. A six is um, two edges like that. Or it could be the other way, like left and right or top and bottom, anyway. So it could also be. Okay. So yeah, hopefully everyone. Oh, so six it. have three ways. Oh no, six have how many? Six has two ways. Oh, two way vertical or horizontal, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. So yeah, now you know, even if you haven't seen a diet, if you've seen a diet, it's just how that works. Okay. Okay, so then I guess how do we do this problem? Well, this problem, there's not that many possibilities. Right. Um, we can just do something like uh, so one has one possibility that's the center two has two possibilities three has two possibilities four has um, one possibility five has one possibility and six has two possibilities and why am i listing this out well the point is there are only and possibilities uh, where the 10th one, like, I mean, there are, there are only nine valid possibilities and everything else is unknown as shown like through, through this thing. So therefore we just check through all nine possibilities. Now, how would we check through all nine possibilities? Uh, well, we can, so we can keep like, there's a, each die is only nine characters, keep nine characters stored somewhere. Whether it's like one string, it can be one string, three strings. Uh, three by three char array uh, or so on. You can keep them stored somewhere as long as you're able to compare them. Um, keep nine characters. To, okay, so for each die, keep nine characters stored. So any of these options would work anyway, whatever you choose. For each side, keep nine characters stored, then find a way to, you know, compare them. We know how to compare them, then keep all nine die possibilities in like, keep all of them and then use if statements check whether they are the same the any match the input any questions
what data type do I use to store them? Well, I can just do anything. Like it can be a three by three char array if I want. It could be a three strings. It could be a string. And then like keep all nine die possibilities. You can keep them in using nine variables or you can keep them using an array. Actually probably using an array would be better. So let me just, uh, I guess, program this because we're kind of running out of time. Wait, why did I unshare? Okay, let's go to here. Uh, uh, let me save this problem first. So that problem was 06J1, okay. All right, and now let me just program this. So first of all, line one equals input dot next. Next is remember a word or a token here, like it's just aligned because there's no spaces. You could also use next line, but I discourage using that in general, so I'm not gonna use it. Now we have the three lines uh, for like this solution, we're just gonna use a single string to store the dice. So string die equals the input uh, value. Let's just call this value equals string D, let's just call it D, equals line one plus line two plus line three. And then let's keep track of all nine possibilities. Um, do it here. String or possibilities equals. I'm just doing it on multiple lines just for, I guess, style. You don't have to. Uh, So possibilities here, uh, there's, they're using O's and colons, so that's one, two would be something like, it could either be this or this, uh, uh, You can work it out on paper if you don't like think that you can work it out like just like this, but you know, I can't show you a piece of paper. So yeah. But three would either be this. These are this is just three lines put together. So yeah. Um, Or there's only one way to do that, which is that five. There's only one way to do that. And then six, there's that. And uh, that. something like this, then let's just do if d dot equals possibilities i, if d equals possibilities i, that means it matches the ith one. Then we need to see which value it is. So then equals 
just keep track of the result. Negative one, let's just make it unknown. Positive number equals known. So then D, that equals this. Uh, we can do the fault. You could just use a bunch of if statements. I'm just going to switch on uh, I. Um, so case, uh, case zero, it's one. Case one result equals two break, but case two also is the same thing as case one. Uh, case three, so that's this one, because zero, one, two, three. Case three or four, it's result equals three. And then case five, no, case, yeah, case five. So the fifth index in here, I just do result equals four. Case six, result equals five. And then the rest of them, result equals six. So this is assuming like over here, I already assumed that it matches one of the possibilities. So that's, that works. Right, and then I just overall, overall this is only gonna be true once because it's only, each of possibility is different. So we're not gonna have to worry about that. Then if result equals negative one still, that means there's, that means it's unknown, so. Uh, print unknown else print result. And now hopefully let's test it on some sample inputs. Switch. Uh, switch, switch. Why, why did I put a colon there? I'm not supposed to put a colon there. Okay, there we go. Five. That should be three. Yes. And that should be unknown. Yes. Let me submit this then. And there's a lot of test cases here. They probably just want to make sure that I'm right. So, yep, I'm right. Every single thing is correct. So, yeah. Any questions? So, Daniel will put a solution of the problem on the canvas, and you ask questions through canvas, and you practice, and the homework was to do these five problems and recording the time. Okay, Daniel will give you a spreadsheet, and you're recording the time. Okay, that's all. And next time, come to class on time. So Daniel will start on time. Today, did he use more time to introduction for the class? Generally, each class discuss five problems. Yeah. So after this class, you learn 60 problems. So you're pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So expect, like, I guess the, the code and the spread the spreadsheet thing uh, to have to, like, be created sometime today.